people like see the big truck and the lights and everything and they get scared and sometimes people just freeze up and slam on the brakes. When you're actually in the seat of the fire and you're there and you're fighting it, it's extremely hot and uncomfortable. You don't have a choice but to get to the ground because the, the heat literally pushes you to the ground. It's not like anything else you've ever felt before in your life. Hi, my name is Dan and I'm a firefighter with the city of Vaughan. No, 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 we're still going, no matter what. Yeah, rain or shine. <laughs> One of the things we would do every single morning uh, would be donning and doffing and making sure that we can put all our gear on with our pack within 90 seconds. So we're ready to go. Well, so then there's like our regular like uniform that we wear. And then on top of that, we have our bunker pants, our bunker coat. And then we also have our SCBA, which is our breathing apparatus. And then our helmet and a balaclava that goes over our face, as well as our mask. We have a course called Defensive Driving. So it's where we learn how to drive aggressively uh, in emergency situations, but we have to follow the rules just like anybody else. So we have to stop at red lights, we have to obey the speed limit, we can get pulled over just the same as anybody else. So we have to exercise everything with caution. Yes, we can go through red lights if we stop fully, have our lights on, make sure everybody's stopped and proceed through, but that doesn't mean that we can just speed right through. We gotta make sure everybody's safe before we go, because if we get hurt, on our way there, then we're of no use to the people that we're trying to come help. We're always dealing with like, oh, you know, it's common sense to pull over to the right, but for some people, they've never had a fire truck barrel in behind them, right? So they didn't know what to do and it's fine. It's just kind of frustrating when you're trying to deal with it. The heat is actually so intense that a lot of people say like, you know, in firefighting, we practice staying low to the ground, right? Because of the thermal layering and how hot it gets, but when it's, that hot and the house is actually going you don't have a choice but to get to the ground because the, the heat literally pushes you to the ground it's, it's not like anything else you've ever felt before in your life but usually when we show up to a fire there'll be you know the first in truck so the very first truck to get there will come up with the game plan of exactly what we're going to do and then as other trucks arrive that first in truck there's just always a captain on every truck and that captain will kind of quarterback and dictate what happens with the next truck, what happens with the one after that, and so on and so forth. The first thing we want to do is rescue anybody, right? We want to retrieve anybody out of the house that we can, uh, and then we want to, you know, fight the fire and try and protect the actual property. But when a house is actually on fire, it's completely pitch black. The second you open the door, you see nothing. So we use a thermal imaging camera so that we're able to kind of keep track of each other and any victims that we might be able to find. Also, it helps us find out where the fire is. Because if it's pitch black, all you can rely on is kind of all your other senses, right? Now you can't see, so you gotta listen for the fire. But if we have this thermal imaging camera with us, it puts us a step ahead of the game. So they can actually see us in a fire condition. It's completely blacked out. You can't see anything. I wouldn't be able to see you in front of me, but with a thermal imaging camera, I could see your silhouette in white and kind of, we can move forward like that. And that's how we'd retrieve victims as well. Like every firefighter, it kind of gets you a little bit. You're like, eh. <laughs> I've never been in a situation where we actually needed water and somebody was parked in front of a fire hydrant, thank God. Um, but there are ways around it. And I'm sure if you Google it, you can see pictures of people who have had their windows smashed out and fire hose put through there, uh, through the center of their car and they can't get their car out until we're done doing what we have to do. Or, you know, I like, there's so many different ways around it and it would, you know, be unfortunate, but at the same time, those rules are there for a reason. We don't write the tickets. So if, if, if we did see something like that, we'd probably let a police officer know and then, or a bylaw officer and have them come in and take the appropriate yeah. measures. Yeah, that like I, we always, you know, sometimes you go around the street corner and you see people like holding their ears or they're yelling and whatever. And I understand, I get it, you know. It, it is what it is, right? Like we have to do that. We have to make people aware that we're about to go into an intersection because if somebody's playing their music really loud, windows are rolled up, they're not paying attention, they're talking on their phone. If we're not being loud and, and lights aren't going, then they don't see us. You know, it's not good for them and it's not good for us. So it's something that like we literally 
we have to do. There's no option to, to not do that when we approach an intersection. We can't shut our uh, sirens off because it's part of our procedures, it's what we're supposed to do. It all depends uh, on the house, to be honest. So newer style homes um, could be fully engulfed within 15 to 30 minutes and uh, they can get away from me really fast just because of all the stuff, the stuff that's in the upholsteries um, and like the kind of material that they're made with. They're not designed to last throughout a fire, but if you go to older style homes, they tend to last a bit longer, maybe 40 minutes to an hour, but it's all, it's all relative, right? It depends on what's inside of them. Uh, that's the biggest thing. We call that like the fuel load. So the majority of, of the majority of stuff in there is like synthetic materials. It's going to go up a lot faster. You gotta go, you gotta tough through it, right? Like you, that happens more often than you think. If it's gonna go wrong, it's gonna go wrong at the worst possible time. So whether that means you're in the bathroom or you know, we were taking a shower or whatever, like it, it, it usually does happen at those times. And when it does right after dinner or right after lunch, you just power through it and suck it up. When a call comes in and you know it's something, you know, people are depending on you and everybody in the truck is trying to come with a game plan and like you're getting dressed and you're thinking about what's happening. You're not really thinking about the background noise like, oh, I just ate and oh, you know, all these other things. You're getting excited and focused on what you have to do. So there's several different programs. Uh, one of them, that I did was I went to Seneca College and I went to night school actually for firefighting while I was doing uh, in my other career. And then from there, uh, I went to Texas. So they have a, a program in Texas that you can do and I went to school there as well and then came back and I started volunteering uh, where I was growing up. And then from there, I got into Bonfire. I think it's different with everybody, but for me, uh, it took me about three to four years uh, to get hired, and that was like, you have to pay money every time you apply. Um, you have to keep all your certifications up. Some people, you know, that it's only taken a year. I know other people that it's taken 10 years. We have like an overall salary that we make. And then when you start off, you make 55% of that overall salary, then 60%. So 55% for the first three months, 60% for uh, the last nine or the next nine. And then every year it goes up 10%. It depends on what fire department you work for, but typically between 90 and $100,000. Okay. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> More than, more than anything, I, lo I love firefighting, I love training, I love the job, I love the look on people's faces when you know, you know you've made a difference. But the most important thing that I look forward to going to work every day is my brothers and sisters that I work with. That's the best part about my job. Those are the people that I see every day, that I help every day, that'll stand behind me every day. Those are the people that keep me coming into work every day. I don't know if I necessarily hate uh, anything, um, but sometimes you have to respond to really unfortunate scenarios um, where people have lost loved ones and tragic things have happened. And I think I could do without that part of the job. If I could do without that stuff, I would, but I know it's part of the job. So I'll, that's probably something that I dislike um, mm -hmm. is seeing, seeing some people on the worst day of their life. Any advice I would give to a, a brand new firefighter would just be never forget how you felt the first day you walked into a recruit class, the first day you put on your uniform, the first day you went into a fire. Those are all the things that will keep you loving the job forever. I've only been on the job for six years, but I know that I've never lost sight of why I fell in love with what I do. and. I don't think as a new person you should ever let that go. The first time you helped somebody and you saw that look of look in their eyes and they said thank you to you, never forget those feelings because um, you got a long career. A career from, in firefighting can be 25 to 30 years, so if you're doing it for that long, sometimes it could get a little stale, right? And if you never forget where you came from, you'll never lose sight of where you're going. Let me think. Do I have to look at the camera when I say it too? Check your smoke alarms. <laughs> if you see a firefighter on the street, make sure you thank a firefighter.